Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Simon Thompson. I work in the smart contracts area for IOG, and I'm here today to talk about DAP certification. It says in the subtitle, setting standards, building assurance, and I'll, I'll address those two points as we go on. What I want to do, first of all, is to start off by just saying what the problem is, and then talk a bit about, about the technology that underlies um, some solutions, and then talk about... And I think through the talk, I'll be talking a bit about why IOG is, is advocating this and supporting this, um, and how it fits with the, the model of the members-based organisation. Um, and then I'll tell you a bit about what we're doing over the next few months. But to get started, a, a, a good headline for this is to say DAP certification is to help developers and end users gain assurance that their DAPs work as they should. We're not saying, nobody, don't believe anyone who says you can, you can guarantee something 100%. It's about gaining assurance. And it's about giving people evidence that underlines, um, underlies that gain in assurance. Why are we doing this? Assets get lost. This was because this particular loss of, of 120K wrapped ether was a smart contract error. This problem was a traditional security error. Some keys were on, a, on a, a server, and that server was hacked, and so the distributed governance protection part of that, that bridge was broken. This was a nice one. Complicated governance protocol. Somebody made a flash loan, which they could use to subvert the governance protocol and steal a heck of a lot of money. So it's about protecting assets. And it's, you know, just to put a, a little statistical um, context, the dark blue section is the, um, is the, the proportion of exploit that it, that of, of this, this loss that is due to code exploits. And you can see that's growing year on year. Because why wouldn't you? You know, if you want to, we know how, how difficult it is to program, and particularly how difficult it is to program in a blockchain, <coughs> blockchain context. So why wouldn't you try and attack programs that are out there? So what is IOG advocating? And you know, why is I IOG advocating um, stuff in this area? Partly because it's the right thing to do. You know, we, should, we should try and ensure this. And if we ensure this for Cardano, dApps on Cardano, we will as a company and as a wider Cardano community, raise standards and hopefully raise those standards for everybody. So what we're advocating are three levels of um, certification. We're advocating all sorts of, of different approaches to automated testing. We're advocating in-depth, manual, eyeball-led audit of, of code. And we're supporting Formal verification, application of mathematical techniques, you know, complicated math, to providing assurance of certain aspects of, of DAPs. Why do we call this certification? The reason we call it certification is because what we, each of these things generates evidence. If you perform tests, you get the results of those tests back. That's evidence that those tests have been passed. It's not me saying they've been passed. You can read the results. In the case of an audit, you get an audit report, which will be a 30, 40 page PDF, plus some ancillary technical stuff, maybe. <clears throat> if you do some, some difficult mathematical reasoning, you get a proof. And you can see this, a proof like the proof of Pythagoras' theorem or whatever. You get this proof, that, and you can inspect. So in each, in each case, you get evidence, and the, the certification part of this is that we're advocating putting that evidence on blockchain, or at least being accessible via the blockchain. So that's the key technical pitch, if you like. Digging in a little bit more in detail, what are we doing at these three different levels? <clears throat> We've worked with Qvic, who are the developers of um, QuickCheck, which is you know, state-of-the-art, random, random-based, property-based testing. And they've built a library which allows developers to 
describe and um, identify errors that exist at the contract level. So, for example, you know, a key example here is from any point in a contract, funds can be recovered in some way. A nightmare is somebody's written a contract by accident, by design, that lock funds up forever. So this kind of testing allows you to check for that kind of property. They've also built tools that allow us to check that check code coverage, of course, so making sure that your tests cover all the relevant code. And they've done that in such a way that they're checking that all the code that puts transactions on chain, which is really where the rubber hits the road, where they, that's the, the place where your assets get lost, that they can check the code coverage for that particular part of your code. So that's, that's one aspect of level one. We'll, we're talking to others, and we're hoping, and there'll be a survey at the end where I'll ask you about your views about testing in this area. But we can see a range of, of tools, and the tooling by Cuvic is something we've supported as a company. Let's say a bit about in-depth audit. Um, and this is where the MBO dimension comes in. So we set up the Cardano DAP certification working group formally in September, but in fact, we, we, we've been working with the community right through the year. And what we did on the basis of that was build SIP52, which is a set of best practice guidelines for audit of Cardano dApps. Um, because what we want to do is, in, is encourage, raise standards, and particularly in this case, develop standards that allow us to, um, to describe what audit, eyeball, tool-based audit should look like. <clears throat> and as I say, there's an active Cardano audit ecosystem. Among the auditors, but not, not exclusively, are FYEO, Runtime Verification, Twig, and MLabs. Um, <clears throat> and as I've, I've said, focuses on inspection, reading code, but supported by tools and, and proof. And a crucial thing to say is I.O. are not in the loop here. This is a direct relationship between a DAP developer and an auditor. You as a developer find the auditor, write the contract, sign a contract with them, and they deliver the results to you. But we, I.O. Is, is, is in this loop to say, let's do this, and, and we will support publicizing the results you get from, from these audits. Thank you. What sort of things do we hear from auditors? The first thing we hear, perhaps not surprisingly, every audit finds errors. But more specifically, we hear things like minting and burning are particular ways in which audits can, can find subtle but really quite devastating errors. If you're using a token as a representation of ownership, then if you can replicate that token, your protocol will probably go wrong. And another place that people attack um, and there are failures is, is optimization. You have a, a, a working piece of code. You say, oh, I'll just tweak it a bit. This will be faster. Yes, it is faster because it doesn't do what it was meant to do. So, um, and then finally, we have, I mean, perhaps characteristic, particularly of a UTXO model, there is code on chain to do. Um, verification, there's code off-chain to, to uh, validation, code off-chain to generate transactions. Do those two code bases have the same view of the world? <clears throat> and a particular quote here from Pi Lanningham, which I'll grab a mouthful of water while you're reading. He says, perhaps most cynically, it puts a moat around um, people who have done DAP certification. That audit, but he's saying there should be a high barrier to entry because protocols will be managing millions of dollars of assets. The final step is to say, can we deploy mathematical methods, proof, perhaps model checking, things that are, are founded in mathematics to, to raise assurance in, in again, and this is a particular case study here, the Wing Riders um, 
<coughs> Dex, which was audited by 30K, another, another auditor in the, in the ecosystem, and what they did was combine manual audit with writing a formal proof. And in their, in their protocol, a particular property was that the, the product of X and Y always increased as the protocol progressed. And what 30K were able to do was prove that particular property of the... Um, and this badly rendered GIF is a screenshot of, of, of the theorem prover validating that that proof actually does what it's supposed to do. Um, now, of course, you know, just to, to reiterate, this doesn't mean there might not be other problems with, with the, the code, but it does mean a whole area of attacks cannot be made. You can be sure that this value of x times y will not change, will not, will not um, decrease. OK, so that's said a bit about um, the, the technologies at level 1, 2, and 3 that produce this evidence. What does certification look like in action? Well, we do test, we do audit, we do verification, and that evidence we can then place on the blockchain. And we're in the process of building, <coughs> building a SIP to describe that standard. So again, and this is with the, the, the certification working group, so that anyone can adhere to that. We're not, it's, not a, it's not a private standard, it's an entirely public community-led standard. So that evidence can be placed on blockchain, and then anyone building a um, DAP store, or anyone interested in a DAP, can take that evidence off the chain and display it. So the Lace wallet that is being developed will have that as a, as a key feature. Um, and you can see that here. In this mock-up, you can see, with this example DAP, You've got a summary of audit, what, um, what vulnerabilities were identified, and so on. Um, and, and so a key part of the description of that DAP is to foreground this kind of assurance information. So who is benefiting from this? As I say, the whole ecosystem, I think, benefits. We raise, raising standards has to be a good thing. It's not completely disinterested. Everybody benefits, and it pulls more people into the ecosystem. Developers improve the quality of code, so there's a, there's a, a carrot there, if you like. Doing this will make your dApps better, um, and probably improve the quality of your development process as well. There's a stick. You know, it will avoid you making costly errors. Um, so developers, there are two gains there. And finally, users can just inc have increased confidence that the dApps are going to behave in the way <coughs> that they're expected to. Good. Now, what are we thinking about next? A few priorities for the next few months. It will be wonderful to um, integrate what we've done with cert about certification inside the, the DAP store. And that's coming, first of all, for level two. And then we've got a, a prototype tool for level one testing. And what we're aiming to do there is to integrate more services into that, working with different partners in the ecosystem. We're working on a strategy for specification and verification, what to do at level three. One thing we're doing at the moment is runtime verification are building a semantics in the K framework for Plutus. That work's coming to an end. That work will support their work in, in level two um, audit. As you saw, they are an auditor there. So that will support that. And we're looking at that and other, other made ways of pushing this forward. And then finally, and I think this is, you know, technically, this is the bit that I think is most elegant. Lace or any other wallet can loop back. So what's the point? I said earlier on, the point where the rubber hits the road is when you submit a transaction with some assets to the chain. What you can do inside a wallet, for example, Lace, is as you submit a transaction, you can check whether the place you're sending that transaction is to an audited DAP. So you can have that Assurance that the place you're sending it is, is audited, is certified at level one or three as well, 
Um, <clears throat> and so have that assurance. Because you know, you're, what you're doing when you inter interact with a DAP is you're interacting with some, a, web, a random web page somewhere. But the key thing is, at, so, at a certain point in that interaction, you will, you will sign a transaction. And that's the point where you can check that you're interacting with a, an, aud an audited DAP. You're interacting with the DAP you thought you were. OK, so I think I'll stop at that point, except to say we'd love to know how you're doing demonstrating assurance on the DAPs that you develop yourselves. So do please take the survey that's linked from that QR code. Thank you very much. <laughs>